welcome back to the channel and this is the brand spanking new m2 pro mac mini which apple just dropped out of nowhere and this is the machine that i've actually been waiting for for so long even when the first m1 mac mini came out let me tell you why I decided to pick one up even though I already have an M1 Max MacBook Pro and a huge shout out to Motion VFX for helping me make this video happen. More on them later in the video. All right, so let's just unbox this Mac Mini real quick and see what we get inside. And to be honest, this is probably gonna be the quickest unboxing you'll see on an Apple product because I'm pretty sure there's not much inside. But yeah, here we have the Mac Mini in this beautiful aluminum silver finish. It's pretty cool to the touch and inside you're also getting the power cable and a quick start guide with an Apple sticker. All right, so this Mac mini that I picked up is customized. So you probably have already watched a ton of videos on new M2, M2 Pro Mac minis, but have only watched base models of those machines. But this one that I picked up has the base M2 Pro with the 10 cores of CPU and 16 core GPU. It's basically the base processor, but I also have 32 gigs of RAM, which is the max amount of RAM you can equip with this Mac mini. And I also upgraded the SSD to one terabyte. So yeah, the reason that I didn't upgrade to the 12 core CPU with 19 core GPU on the Mac mini is because I know the difference is pretty negligible. It's only about a two to 4% difference in real world performance. And I'd rather use that $300 to upgrade the SSD instead, since I deal with a ton of video files, which takes up a ton of space. And I knew that the 512 gigs wasn't gonna be enough for me. Okay, so let's talk benchmarks real quick. So in terms of Geekbench 5, which is everyone's favorite CPU benchmark for Macs, this Mac mini gave me a single core score of 1876 and a multi-core score of 11,750, while my M1 Max MacBook Pro 14 got a single core score of 1772 and a multi-core score of 12,596, which is only about a 7% difference. I mean, already with this chart that you can see, even though this is only the base M2 Pro processor, it's clearly neck and neck with my 2021 M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is upgraded to the max. Jumping onto a GPU test though, I know for a fact that my M1 Max MacBook Pro is gonna blow this new Mac mini out of the water since it only has a 16 core GPU and my M1 Max has twice the GPU cores with 32 cores. And if we take a look at the scores, the 16 core GPU on this M2 Pro Mac mini scored 46,539, whereas the 32 core GPU M1 Max scored 72,044. That's about a 55% difference in performance. Now, if you're gonna need more GPU cores for heavy intensive tasks, or you just need all of that GPU power to render out 3D work, then this Mac mini isn't for you. You're better off going with an M1 Max computer or the newer M2 Max MacBook Pros. But moving on to Cinebench R23, which is another CPU benchmarking tool. This basically will measure out your CPU's rendering performance. So for the M2 Pro Mac mini, I got a single core score of 1,581 and a multi-core score of 11,555. My M1 Max MacBook Pro though got a single core score of 1,529 and a multi-core score of 12,260. Again, pretty similar to what we got with Geekbench, but the single core score uh, actually seems to be a lot more similar here, but it's about a 6% difference in multi-core performance. Now, one of the bigger issues with new Macs recently, especially on the M2 chips, is the SSD performance. It started out with the M2 MacBook Air's base 256 gig storage and how much slower that was compared to the upgraded 512 gigabyte version, but since this M2 Pro Mac mini ships with a 512 gig SSD, I was a little bit skeptical on its uh, performance, but I also knew that I needed more storage anyway, so I upgraded to one terabyte SSD, and from what it looks like, we're actually seeing double the speeds on this one terabyte version versus the standard base configuration. We're getting about 6,000 megabytes a second for its write and about 5,000 megabytes a second for its read speed. Comparing that to the 3000's read and write speeds on the base SSD. It's a pretty big difference, especially if you're the type of user who always transfer files over from an external back to your Mac or vice versa. And just to give you guys an example, the Final Cut project that we're gonna talk about in a bit is a little bit over 120 gigabytes, and that actually only took about two minutes and 41 seconds to transfer from a Samsung T7 external SSD. Now, as a full-time content creator,
operator, I spent a lot of time in Final Cut Pro, and for the test that I did on this Mac Mini, I transferred over my iPhone 14 Pro after the updates video over to this Mac Mini, and this was shot on a Sony A7S III, an S-Log 3 with a bunch of B-roll, text effects for motion VFX, who was actually kind enough to help me make this video so I can create those super neat texts and charts and overlays for all my videos, and they have a ton of super helpful plugins that can, you know, help you elevate your videos. But it also helps me cut down on time creating graphics or things that I'd normally create on my own in After Effects. So if you're a content creator or you're just starting out and you just want to help elevate your videos, make sure to check out Motion VFX using the first link down below and check out their massive plugin library for Final Cut Pro, DaVinci, and Premiere. But going back to the Final Cut project though, on my M1 Max MacBook Pro, I was actually able to edit, scrub footage, and add all these effects on top of my videos and it did not stutter one bit. And I'm happy to say that it's pretty much the same experience on this Mac Mini with the M2 Pro. It's super quick, responsive, and all the plugins work just fine and I had no issues with video playback, scrubbing the timeline, even with the unrendered timeline. When it comes to exporting though, there's a little bit of a difference here. On the M1 Max MacBook Pro, is actually able to export out that project without rendering the timeline at 4 minutes and 9 seconds, and on this M2 Pro Mac Mini, I was able to export that same project without rendering it in 5 minutes and 3 seconds. Is it a night and day difference? No. But here's what I can say after a week of using the Mac Mini for video editing and as my primary computer when I'm not on the go. If you look at this machine from a price to performance perspective, the Mac Mini M2 Pro with this spec at $1,900 is so much cheaper than my M1 Max MacBook Pro that's well over $4,000 back in 2021. Granted, I don't get a keyboard, a trackpad, a really beautiful display, and four terabytes of internal storage, but what you are getting, even if it's the base M2 Pro configuration at $1,299, is a very powerful machine that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most powerful laptop from Apple from a year and a half ago. For a starting price of, like I said, $1,299 or $1,199 if you're a student and take advantage of that EDU pricing, there's actually a lot to like here with the Mac Mini. Besides the performance, you're also getting four Thunderbolt 4 ports, two USB-A ports, an Ethernet port, HDMI 2.1 that can go up to 8K60 or 4K 240Hz. And you know what? Even though I don't have four terabytes of internal storage like my MacBook Pro, I can always plug in my external SSDs and keep them plugged in here since this is a desktop after all. That way I can use those externals as my editing drive so I can transfer files between my Mac Mini and my MacBook Pro. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this video, and if you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and stay tuned to the channel because there are some pretty exciting things coming, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next one.